I've been at all the the committee meetings and I, I think this is important, this, this bill and, and I know the amendments there tonight and I did speak about remote working and I think it is part of our future so I do think we need to have the balance right there. Um, I also asked you about the two, two years review, I think that's important Minister that we clarify that because while I raised the issue at committee that it, it is vitally important that business owners are brought along on this journey with this legislation, it's hugely important that an employee who needs the time can access that time but that the business owner is not also losing out because that would not be good for the working relationship. I welcome that there is an obligation on employers to facilitate this. Work-life balance brings the most benefits when the options are available, which suits the organisa organisation's needs and those of the employ employees. And the reason I'm saying this here tonight is, while this is really important, this work-life balance, we are here at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday night. I know our time has been extended. There was an extra few hours put on today. Um, but I think we need to lead by example. Uh, Minister, and I just think it is important that you know that, that we get this legislation through. But I also think it's important that we ourselves are examples of how we go go forward. And again, we've had lots of committee meetings on this. I want to welcome that. And I just want to ask you again. I'm just going back to the two years review of exactly what will happen in, within the two years. What is the plan to go forward? And maybe you could come back to us with that information. And thank you, Minister. And, and thanks to the deputies for their contributions. I think, uh, you know, deputies have spoken about the, the, the process, both in terms of the work we've done uh, through committee on the original Work-Life Balance Directive and, of course, the, the work that's been done on the uh, Right to Remote Working Bill. And I'm aware that a very detailed PLS process was undertaken and a detailed PLS report was, was published. I think just in terms of the amendments being brought forward today, we are implementing the recommendations of the PLS report. And I, don't, I actually struggle to think how, how often I've seen such a clear implementation of a PLS report in legislation. So I'll cite recommendation five. The committee recommends that code of good practice are quickly evolved so that once in place, refusals must be grounded in a stated policy from employers founded on these codes. The committee proposes the principles, sorry, number six, the committee proposes the principles underlying, underpinning a reasonable code of practice should now be set out in law and allow the WRC to design how they should be applied in different workplace situations. We're doing both of those with this legislation. The committee advises that to accompany the primary legislation above with a WRC, and we're using the WRC code of practice to elaborate on and encourage uh, reasonableness on the part of employer and empl employee. We're doing that. Number eight, the committee proposes legislation should mandate the WRC to draw up a code of practice in the first instance upon which the policies of employers can be based. We're doing that. And finally, the committee proposes that the legislation should align with the general scheme of a work-life balance and miscellaneous provisions bill. We're doing that. We are implementing the recommendations brought forward from the PLS on remote working and implementing it again in a way that, you know, you know what? We've had discussions, Deputy Function, in terms of how much of a PLS has gone into a piece of legislation. I really think a lot of this PLS has gone into that, this piece of legislation. So I think it's just maybe worth, worth, worth setting that out at the start. There will be a two-year review of this legislation, and I think that's important. We're doing a number of new and innovative things here. And this is an area of, in a, the, the area of, of, of remote working particularly is an innovative one. As um, uh, Deputy O'Reilly said, some companies are, are now offer it from day one, and that's a positive thing. But again, we're putting in place a statutory right to request it here. So there will be a review after two years, and as we know, that review will also look at potentially um, expanding the um, right of the, 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 the rights of flexible working, uh, which is the right for, for, um, for, for varied hours or a shorter working day, which currently, as implementing the EU directive, only applies to parents and carers. That will examine extending that further as well, which could be a potential further advancement of, uh, of, of the rights of, of, of workers generally. And of course, it will look at the provisions of the uh, five, uh, five days, look at the uptake of uh, DSGBV leave and see what changes need to be made there. So I just wanted to make those 
as, as, as a general point. In terms of the, uh, in, 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 in terms of the six months, the six months uh, within which uh, uh, the, the, the right to request gets its statutory basis, that allows an assessment in terms of the uh, needs of the work of the employer and the needs of the employee. It may not be automatically uh, uh, available in every workplace from day one for a full understanding of can a right to a, can a request for remote working meet the needs of both the employer and the employee. It's also important to remember that the. Uh, right can be granted after six months, but that doesn't stop an employee uh, applying for it earlier. As we know, there's a, a, a number of weeks of, a, uh, of an application uh, process in which their application is judged. That can happen before the six-month period of time, but the actual ability to take up the right kicks in after the, uh, a, 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 the six-month uh, period of, uh, a, 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 of time. Um, and again, as I said, remote working is about balancing the employer's rights and the, the, the rights of the, the, the employee. And I think maybe on that point, it is worth maybe drawing up a comparison. And Deputy O'Reilly referred to the, to the UK uh, legislation where, where, she, uh, where, where she argues part of the approach adopted there is, is better than the approach being adopted here. I think it's worth um, uh, just, just looking, uh, contrasting the UK proposals with our own. Our own proposals contain no statutory grounds for refusal. That was in the original piece of uh, proposal on remote working, the, the 13 reasons why. Um, now we have no statutory grounds for refusal, unlike in the UK legislation, where they've eight statutory grounds of refusal. Um, the um, Irish legislation contains an explicit legal obligation for employers to consider the employee's needs. That's part of the balancing test under the Irish law. That's not the case in the UK legislation. And also the Irish law contains no limits to the number of requests that can be made under the UK legislation. That's limited to one request for, per year. So I think in terms of the overall strength of our legislation, it, it, it stacks up well vis-a-vis uh, -vis what's, uh, what's being proposed in the uh, United Kingdom. In terms then of some of the uh, other specific, uh, specific points that were made, the definitions that uh, Deputy O'Reilly spoke about, so the uh, reasonable adverse, uh, sub substantial adverse effect and the reasonable grounds, both of those will be fleshed out within that code of con conduct that we've discussed earlier on that will be brought forward by the Workplace uh, R Relations uh, C Commission. In terms of the, the, the ask of the, uh, of the location, look, uh, you know, some remote working requests will probably be uh, granted in terms of also having reasonable access to the office uh, if, if the, the, the employer, the employee is needed to, to attend in the office or intended in the workplace at some point. And I think in that con context, it's reasonable for the uh, employer to understand where the, uh, where the employee is, uh, is, is based and will be proposing to undertake the, um, the, the, uh, the work. Uh, in terms then just of the uh, exclusions, and again, I suppose this uh, has to be understood in terms of what this is. This is a right to request. We're not, it's, it's not a statutory right to remote working. We, we, look, we recognise that it is a right to, to request. Um, and um, as we know, not all occupations, not all o o industries or, or particular roles within an enterprise will be suitable or appropriate for remote, uh, remote working. Uh, and, and as such, there has to be some element of, a, of an exclusion provision in there. But again, that is something that can be looked at in that two-year review that, uh, that, that we spoke about earlier on.